the positron is specifically the antiparticle to the electron. When you have a positive charge, which is positrons, and an electron is a ne negative charge, and when they come together, those two annihilate. All the mass is converted into energy. When matter comes together with antimatter, all you have left is energy. It's 100% efficient. Realistically, the only way that we're going to go into deep space is by using matter, antimatter. When you use antimatter, matter as a fuel, what you have going out is gamma rays to push you along, keep pushing you faster and faster and faster and faster, so you could eventually start to approach the speed of light. And there won't be any use unless we have a way to store positrons. So the idea about storing positrons is that we want to collect or we want to have antimatter to then annihilate them at desired times to get energy, to convert positron electron annihilation power into something that drives an engine or turns on the lights. A trap in principle is a box, a container to put a particle into it, just like you take gasoline and put it into a gas tank. A simple way to think about it is if you were to take a box of straws, each one of these straws is one of our little traps. Now we have millions of these straws, so that each positron is shielded by electrons in a very elegant way. But to give you a scale, the trap that we have in mind would almost fit into a can like this. If we can show that the trap works, then it's just a matter of extrapolating it. And just as with lasers, there's many, many new ideas. For example, even with the transistor, when it was first discovered, two of the three people didn't think it would ever be useful. And as we all know, the transistor is driving the whole world today with the integrated circuits and computers. It could happen in your lifetime.